Hello guys, what's going on? It's King Crystal here, back with another video, and today I'm going to be teaching you all how simple it is to build a PC. Just a quick reminder, if you have any questions after watching this video, the link to my Discord server, Crystal Cord, will be down below. I'll be happy to help during your build process. So first off, let me get some disclaimers about this video out of the way. This is a basic how-to video for beginners. If you are more of a veteran who just likes watching builds, stay tuned for my time-lapse video I'll be posting later. This video only includes the hardware side of building a PC. No OS installation or anything of the sort like driver installation will be included. This video is meant to be very basic for new PC builders. I'm not going to go too much in depth for adding extras like a ton of RGB lighting and such. This is not a parts list build guide. I do not recommend going and purchasing this exact PC build. Especially in these times, prices and deals are constantly changing. This is only a tutorial on how to build, not what to build with. The only tool you will 100% need to build a PC is a screwdriver, preferably magnetic. Only one person is required to build a PC, however, having some helping hands is never a bad thing. Without further ado, let's get straight into the build. So the first thing I like to do is prep the case. Specifically, I'm going to start with taking out the pre-installed case fans in this Thermaltake H18. Next up, I'm going to install my own fans, and the process is the same for every fan. So I'll only show one here. You just screw the fan in with the screws shown on screen. If you're installing Fantex Halos for RGB, like I am in the front, you'll want to use longer screws shown on screen now, and put them through the halo and the fan. Needless to say, this is really simple. I installed a total of five fans, two in the back for exhaust and three up front with Halo's RGB port. Next up, before you do anything else, go ahead and pop in the IO shield. This is found in your motherboard box, and if you forget to do this and install your motherboard, it can be a real pain because then you have to uninstall your motherboard in order to get it in. Now that we have slightly prepped our case, let's move to the motherboard. I recommend setting your motherboard on the motherboard box because the bottom of the motherboard can be kind of sharp, so you don't want to risk like scratching your table or something along those lines. Lift up the little lever to release the CPU socket. Take the CPU and line up the little arrow on the CPU with the arrow on the corner of the CPU socket. Then lightly set it down. Don't put any force, just place it in. Then put the lever down. It's okay if there's a little pressure there, don't be scared. Next up, I'm using the Ryzen stock cooler, the Wraith Stealth, in this build. If you're doing the same, you're going to need to take off this pre-installed bracket. Just unscrew it and store it in your motherboard box for future use. So here we have the bottom of our stock cooler. It has pre-applied thermal paste, so no need to apply any more than that. Just slowly place your CPU cooler down, aligning it with the standoff type screws on the corners of the CPU socket. Then screw the CPU cooler in gradually in a crisscross pattern. I don't recommend doing one screw all at once either. Get each screw threaded first and then go ahead and tighten them equally at a time until it is fully secure. Then you are going to need to plug in the CPU fan cable to the CPU fan header. It's usually in the top right hand corner of your motherboard. Next we are going to install the memory. We are using two RAM sticks, although there are four DIMM slots on the motherboard. Please check your motherboard manual to figure out which specific DIMM slots you are supposed to use. Typically, you alternate. In my case, I needed to use DIMM 2 and 4. Unlatch the latches on the side of the RAM slots you are using. Then, gently place the RAM in each DIMM slot, lining up the notch that is slightly off-center with the notch in the RAM slot. Firmly place both hands on each side of the RAM stick and push in until you hear the latch click. Do this for as many RAM sticks as you have. Now, we are ready to put the motherboard in the case. However, before you do this, here are some things to keep in mind. In this example, I didn't have an M.2 drive, but if you do have one, I recommend doing this outside of the case after you install the memory. Make sure the correct amount of standoff screws are already installed in the case. You can count how many you need by looking at the motherboard, then look inside the case and make sure they line up correctly. To put the motherboard in the case, pick it up and go in it from the side. Line up the back I.O. with the I.O. shield we placed in earlier. If you need to use the CPU cooler as a leverage point for holding the motherboard, this should be fine, just don't force it in. Gently place it in until it's rather snug in the case and the standoffs line up with the screw holes. Next up, begin screwing the motherboard into the case. I recommend screwing in opposite corners first, this will make sure you don't have any misalignment early on. As you can see, at the beginning there were no screws in the motherboard. However, afterwards all the standoff locations have screws in them to hold the motherboard in place. Next up, I want to take some time to get the fans and the front I.O. headers in. I started with plugging in the USB 3.0 front panel cable to the USB 3.0 header on the motherboard. I then plugged in the HD audio and USB 2.0 to the correct headers. The cables look very similar, but are notched differently so there is no possible way to put them in the wrong way. Next we got the smallest and most difficult part to record, the tiny front I.O. connections. This normally includes your power switch, power LED, HDD LED, and reset switch. In the Thermaltake H18 there is no power LED because there is a static LED that is plugged in via Molex to your PSU. 
We'll need to say, here I am plugging in the power switch, HDD LED, and reset switch. Please consult your motherboard manual to find the exact placement of these cables. Next up, it's time to plug the fans into the motherboard. These fans use Arctic's PowerShare technology and are thus able to daisy chain to each other. The two in the back are daisy chained and the three in the front are as well. Therefore, I only need you to use two fan headers to plug in all five fans. Just plug in the last fan connection on the daisy chain into each fan header, lining the notches up on the side. Finally, push fully in. Now I'm plugging in the RGB header for the Fantex Halos. Once again, the Halos are daisy chained in the back, so only one header is necessary. At this point, we are done with most non-power supply related connections. So now it's time to install our PSU. In our case, gently slide it in through the side and push back. If you're putting your PC on a desk or smooth surface, or there is a PSU shroud that blocks airflow on the inside, put the PSU's fan facing downwards, assuming there is ventilation on the bottom for it. If there is circulation on the inside and you're planning to put your PC on carpet, put the PSU's fan facing upwards into the case, as the carpet may choke the PSU. Then screw in the PSU from the back using four screws. The first PSU cable to install is the huge 24-pin ATX for your motherboard's power. Strangely, I never got a satisfying click or anything when installing this on the motherboard, although normally you would. Next up, install the CPU power, usually found at the top right of the motherboard. Make sure you are using a 4 plus 4 or EPS power connector and not a 6 plus 2 or PCIe power connector. They are notched differently to make sure that you cannot make this mistake. Now that our PSU is installed, we are going to install our graphics card and PCIe Wi-Fi adapter. Note, a Wi-Fi adapter is only necessary if you cannot use Ethernet. First, take off the bracket holding in the PCIe slot covers, and for our case we need to take off three of the covers by unscrewing them. Take your graphics card and gently push it into the topmost PCIe X16 slot until you hear a click. Screw in the graphics card's PCIe slot covers until it is fully secured to the case. Plug in the graphics card's power. Usually this is an arrangement of 6 plus 2 pin power connectors. In our case, it was a singular 6 plus 2 pin connector, although sometimes you may need more than that for cards that consume more power. Then, to put our Wi-Fi card in, gently place the card into an available PCIe slot and screw the PCIe cover into place the same way you did with the graphics card cover. Finally, replace the PCIe bracket that holds all the slot covers in place, which we removed earlier by screwing it in. Next, we are going to install our boot drive. We are using a SATA SSD. In our case, you need to screw in screws on one side of the case while holding the SSD on the other side. You'll need to screw in the four corners of the SSD. You'll see what it looks like from the other side in a moment when we plug in the SSD's cable. So here we are plugging in the cables on the side of, with the SSD. The first is a SATA power cable from the power supply. Then we connect the SATA data cable. This is then brought to the front of the case and connected to an available SATA port on the motherboard. Do this same process for all SATA based drives. That is the last step of building a PC. Now you're ready to plug the PC into the wall and make sure you get into the BIOS or new boot device detected screen. If you do, then you have built the PC successfully. I then recommend going and taking on some time to go manage the cables in the back in order to put the back panel back on. You are then ready to install an OS, drivers, and get gaming or doing whatever you want to do with the PC. I hope you guys all enjoyed this tutorial. Big thanks to my friend Logan for allowing me to build his PC for him and record this content for you all to see. In this tutorial, we went over how to prep the case with fans and the I.O. shield, how to install the CPU and memory on the motherboard, how to place the motherboard in the case, how to install front panel connections and power supply connections, how to install a graphics card and other PCIe devices, and how to connect a SATA storage device. I hope you all enjoyed the video, found it helpful, and to any new PC builders, I hope this helps you all on your journey and showed you how simple building your own PC can be. Without further ado, this is King Christo signing off, peace out.